Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Each week at this time, Kraft presents from Hollywood, California, Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve, written by Leonard L. Levinson. We'll hear from the Great Gildersleeve in just a moment. But right now, here's a question for you. Did you know that you can overeat and still be undernourished? That it's not so much the quantity of food you eat as the kind of food you eat that's important. Well, it's true. And that's why you should learn all you can about the right foods to serve your family. Wholesome, protective foods that provide the energy and real nourishment your family needs. So it's important to you that delicious parquet margarine, made by Kraft, is one of the right foods. And that it's so economical you can serve your family all they need. Yes, parquet margarine is a protective food that's packed full of wholesome nourishment. Parquet is one of the best sources of food energy you can serve. And you all know how important vitamin A is. It's truly a protective vitamin. Well, parquet margarine is rich in vitamin A. There are 9,000 units in every pound. And don't forget, parquet is the margarine with the delicious flavor, whether you use it at the table for baking or for pan frying. So ask your dealer for delicious, economical parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Just ask for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. And now let's visit our friend, the great Gildersleeve. Mr. Gildersleeve, report of a state of Marjorie and Leroy Forrester Miners, submitted by Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve Guardian. Well, it looks very neat, Ted. Should impress Judge Hooker. Is it complete? All but the name of that firm that leased the 12th Street property. Oh, yes. Let's see. What was that firm? Oh, yes. The Swanky Hanky Shoppy. <laughs> Thanks. I'll just fill that in. It was a 99-year lease, wasn't it? Yes, 99 years with monthly options. <laughs> oh, Marjorie... Oh, hello, Ted. Hi, Margie. Say, that's a new dress, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> what do you think of it? Uh, stop well, asking him questions, Marjorie, or he'll charge the estate for giving a legal opinion. <laughs> I'll go in the other room, young man, and tend to your paper. Oh, Ted. <laughs> Did you want me? Yes. Uh, all ready to go to court, eh? Uh-huh. Uh, what about your brother? Where is Leroy? Oh, I sent him to change his shirt for the third time. Uh, Uncle, I wish we'd make him get rid of that printing press. Well, little boys will always revert to type. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, tell him to hurry. I don't want to be late. This is important, and I'm getting jittery about it. Oh, now, relax and take it easy, Uncle Throckmorton. Relax? Ted yeah. says the report is in fine shape. Why, there's nothing to be excited about. How is it? No, by George. Come to think of it, I've done wonders. If I do say so myself. In fact, I will say so myself. I've done wonders. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Why, since you arrived in Summerfield a month ago, you've straightened out all of our investments... Rented that vacant property and even put the kitchen on a budget. Why, Judge Hooker should be very pleased. I hope so. I made up my mind to demonstrate to that old... What is it Leroy calls him? Uh, old Leroy? What, Uncle Boy? What was it I told you not to call Judge Hooker? Picklepuss! That's it. I made up my mind to show that old pickle puss that a competent businessman could administer this estate properly. Why? Because you can't put anything over on me. Excuse me, Mr. Gill, please. Uh, yes, Bertie? Where did you buy them bananas? Well, from a man in a truck. They were bargains, too. The stores want 30 cents a dozen, and he only charged me 25. Well, he done gypped you there was only nine bananas. Yeah. <laughs> yes. As I was saying, mind you, you can't put anything over on my type of businessman. We have a certain alertness. Uh, oh, great Danes. What's wrong? Look at the time. We'll be late for court. Oh, but court stays open until 5 o'clock, Uncle Moore. Yes, but we can't just drop in whenever we want, my dear. It isn't a barbershop, you know. We have to be there when the judge is ready to take us. Oh, like a beauty parlor. Yes. You see, I don't want to arrive late and have trouble with old uh, cucumber face. I've got to get back here and pack up my bag so I can take the night train. The night train? Yes. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I'm going to back to Whistle Vista this evening. Oh, Uncle Moore. Huh? Well, I thought you were going to stay here and live with us. Well, I am. That's why I'm going back to Whistle Vista. Huh? 
to sell or lease my house there. You are? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, Leroy. Yeah, what's it? Uncle Moy's going to sell his house in Whistle Vista and come back here and live with us. Oh, boy. Gee, that's wonderful, Uncle yeah. Moy. Take it easy. Uh, do you want me to make you a for sale sign on my printing press? No, no, no. Thanks, just the same. You haven't got that many shirts to spare. Oh, uh, Ted, is it time to go? Yes, we should hurry down to the courthouse. Everybody ready? Uh, Leroy, Marjorie, Ted, Bertie? Oh, Bertie's not going to court with us, Uncle Moore. I know that. I just want a glass of water. That <laughs> ham I had for breakfast. Uh, water, Bertie. Yes, Mr. Gill, please, bring it. Good. Anybody else want any water? No, oh, no. thank you. Here you are, sir. You better hurry, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, one second while I drink this. <laughs> Thanks, Bertie. Now I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Excuse me, I... Must have drunk too fast. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, Ted. I think Uncle Mort has the hiccup. Uh, hiccups? No, I'll be all right. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> Maybe you better do something about it. No, no, no. I'll be all right. <laughs> Ooh. Well, Uncle Mort, you better sit down and rest a minute. Well, what about court? You know, Judge. <laughs> uh. Judge Rucker, oh, he'll wait. Uh, yes, I can have it put over till tomorrow. But I got to get back to Whistle Vista, Ted. I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Ooh, or could I? <laughs> No, no, no. I'll be all right in a few minutes. No, oh, isn't this silly? <laughs> now, don't try to talk, Uncle Mort. Just, just sit quietly for a few minutes and, and rest. Rest? All right, I'll rest. <laughs> Maybe it would help if you unbuttoned your vest, Unc. Unbutton my vest? I'll try it. Yes, that seems a little better. Oh! Uh, spoke too soon. <laughs> better button it up again. Yeah. Say, I know a sure cure for hiccups. It never fails. It doesn't? Well, what is it? Drink a glass of water. Oh, but Marjorie, my dear, don't you remember? That's how I got them, uh, drinking water. No, but you didn't drink slowly. Slowly. You've got to take nine swallows of water and, and not breathe in between. Not breathe? What am I, a fish? <laughs> now, Uncle Mort, it's cured thousands. Sure, you know, a hair from the dog that bit you. Uh, Ted, this is hiccups, not hydrophobia. <laughs> well, I'll get a glass of water. Yeah. You better get a pitcher in case one glass full won't do it. What are you trying to do, drown them? <laughs> no, no, no more water, Marjorie. One more swallow and I'll... Fly back to Capistrano. <laughs> oh, help me out of this rocking chair. I'm getting seasick. Cheer up, Unc. If you can keep on hiccuping for another two hours, you'll get your picture and strange as a thing. You're a bright boy, Leroy. I'll keep quiet. Uh, Mr. Gildersleep, I just remembered something that'll take care of those hiccups. You do, Ted? What is it? Well, it's simply a matter of breath control. Say, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers without taking a breath. Oh, I... Well, go on, try it, Uncle Moore. Well, all right. Peter Piper picked up. Uh, no, no, slower, like this. like this. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, that way. Yeah. Peter Piper picked up. Uh, picked up. Uh, picked up. <laughs> oh, more water, Bertie. Here we is, Miss Gilsley. Thanks. Well, who's got the next suggestion? Step right up. Don't be bashful. Gildersleeve the guinea pig. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I wouldn't be bringing it up, Mr. Gilsley, except my know it'll work positively. Now, if you hold a cold silver knife on the back of your neck, then hiccups will be gone with the wind. Well, all right, I'll try anything once. If you got a cold knife, Bertie. Uh, yes, sir. I brought one right here with me, Mr. Gilsleeve. Unbutton your collar, Uncle. There. Ooh, it sends the shivers up and down my spine. Where'd you get that knife, Bertie? I had it in the refrigerator. You never can tell when a nice cold knife comes in handy. Hey, Uncle Mort! Uncle Mort, I was outside talking to my pal, Piggy Banks, and when he had to hiccup the... Hey, what's that knife doing in your back? Did they operate on you? Oh. No, Leroy. Bertie suggested cold silver against the back of my neck. Oh, that won't work. It will, too, you, Leroy. I've been watching your uncle since he tried it, and he ain't hit once. By George, come to think of it, I haven't hit. Now, this is wonderful, Bertie. Thanks very much. Now, remind me to give you a dollar. Uh, Ted, let's get started for the courthouse. But, Uncle Moore, a cold knife against the back of the neck cures nosebleeds, not hiccups. Why, that's right. Oh, I thought so, too. You mean to say it's not good for <laughs> hiccups? Oh, jumping jelly beans. Oh, they've come back again. Forget about that dollar, Bertie. Say, Uncle Morris, I know a sure cure. I can't miss. No, Leroy. It's my turn this time. I've just remembered a remedy. But that isn't fair. I spoke up first. Say, whose hiccups are these? Yours or mine? 
Okay, go ahead. They're your hiccups. Yeah. What's your remedy, Uncle Moore? Well, I'll, I'll take a cold shower. The shock should stop me. It sounds logical. Well, it won't hurt at any rate. We've got to do something so I won't keep speaking out of turn in court. <laughs> I'll get the car out of the garage. I'll bet that shower doesn't work, Marge. Now, my idea is to scare Uncle Moore. What for? Well, that's an absolute positive cure for hiccups. How do you know? It cured Piggy Banks when he had him te- something terrible. How'd he get them? Drinking a whole bottle of pop at one gulp. Honest, his family tried everything. Then his kid brother put a string of firecrackers in his pocket and lit the fuse. That did the trick, all right, all right. But didn't those firecrackers burn a big hole in his coat pocket? No, Piggy wasn't wearing a coat. Gee, if I could only think of something super to pull on Uncle Mort, I bet I'd scare the hiccups right out of him. Now, you wait a minute, Leroy. Don't you do anything drastic. Oh, me? When did I ever do anything? Say, how's about it if I, I put ketchup on my head and stagger into his room and fall down on the floor? Leroy, Forrester, now don't you dare. Well, all right. Let's see. What else would frighten those Donald hiccups? Oh, oh, it's freezing in the shower. The birdie must be using the hot water in the kitchen. Oh, this water is ice cold. Oh. Uncle Mort! Uncle Mort! Uh, yes? Uncle Mort, where are you? The house is on fire. What? The house is on fire. Oh, I've got to get out of here. Oh, where's my clothes? Uh, no time for clothes. My bathrobe, where'd I put it? Uh, never mind, here's a big towel. <laughs> All right. Come on, Leroy. Which way shall we go? No, no. No, Uncle Mort, go back. Why? Because you still got the hiccup. What's that got to do with my house being on fire? It isn't on fire. I was just trying to scare you. Scare me? What's the big idea? Gee, I only meant it for the best. I was just trying to frighten the hiccups away. If I ever ran out of the house like this, I'd frighten the neighbors away. <laughs> I'm awful sorry, Uncle Mort. Say, you better get back in the shower. There's a big drip on the carpet. Who, me? <laughs> You clear out of here now. As soon as I get dry, we're going down to the court. Hiccups or no hiccups? All right, folks. (gasps) I'm ready to go now. Come on, Ted. Come on, Marjorie. We're coming. Yeah. Uh, Where's Leroy? I think he went out. He must be waiting in the car. Good. I hope the judge doesn't mind. Okay, buddy, stick him up. Your money or your life. Leroy, come out of that closet and put back that water pistol. Oh, that didn't work either. You can't frighten me, Leroy. I'll go out and get in the car, young man. I told you, Leroy. Just you wait. I'll figure out a scheme that'll make Uncle Mort forget all about those beaks of his. Yeah. Uh, get in the car, everybody. <laughs> Lovely day, isn't it? Too bad I can't appreciate it. Maybe being in the fresh air like this, my hiccups will... Stop. Oh, no, they won't. Stop. Oh, and the car is doing it, too. Stop. Boy, every time you hiccup, P.P., your foot goes down on the gas. Do you think so? Yes. Yeah. You want to stop and let me drive? No, we haven't got time. I can't help it. I'm afraid they're getting worse. Oh, lots worse. Yeah, the curve. curve. Yeah. What's the idea of driving down the street like a jackrabbit and jumping the signal? Where's your driver's license? Well, it's like this, officer. Oh, it's like that, is it? (laughs) Hey, what's going on here? has a severe attack of hiccups. Yes, yes he, he got it drinking a glass of water. Water, huh? Well, that's original anyway. <laughs> He's been hiccuping for hours. Show the officer how you've been hiccuping, Uncle. See? <laughs> Never mind, I've heard him before. Uh, officer, we're in somewhat of a hurry. We're rushing down to the... I get it, to a doctor. Well, come on. What? <laughs> oh, of course, that's it. <laughs> Where's the nearest doctor, officer? Let's not dilly-dally. <laughs> Gee, you got it bad. Follow me, I'll clear away for you. Thank you. Well, here we are, Mr. 
Medical Center building. Oh, I don't know how to thank you, officer. Yes. <laughs> well, that's all right. Same thing happened to my sister's kid two months ago. You know how we cured her? Made her eat a quart of ice cream fast. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'll put that down on my list. Hurry, Uncle Morse. Shall we go with you? No, you two children stay here with Ted. Oh. Going up? Yes. Is there a doctor in the building who specializes in hiccups? I mean, a, a cure for hiccups. Oh, you might try Dr. Simard on 7. Get in, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you've got them bad, mister. Yeah. Well, I know something that will cure them in no time. You do? What is it? Eat a quart of ice cream fast. Yeah. <laughs> Seventh floor. Uh, there's Dr. Simard's waiting room. Four doors down. Uh, thank you very much. All this fuss over these silly hiccups. Well, at least I'll get rid of them for sure now. Uh, Dr. E.E. E. Simard, throat, chest, and stomach. That should cover hiccups, I guess. <laughs> oh. Oh. How do you do? Do you wish to see the doctor? No. I just dropped in to catch up on my last year's reading. Well, you should do something about those hiccups. Now, a quart of ice cream eaten fast. I know. It's a sure cure. But I want some competent medical advice. Is the doctor busy? Not at the moment. Uh. Now, if you'll step in here and disrobe... I don't want to disrobe. I want to see the doctor. But if the doctor is going to examine you, you... He keeps his clothes on, doesn't he? Yes. Well, then I'll keep mine on, too. Stop! Where is he? Uh, step in here. Doctor, this gentleman wishes to consult. Tut, tut, Miss Wood. How many times have I told you that patients must disrobe? We've been all through that, doctor. Stop! There's no need for me to do that. You can see what's wrong with me. Stop! Hmm. Open your mouth, please, and unbutton your vest. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You can close your mouth now. <laughs> well, it didn't take me long to diagnose this case. No? No. You're suffering from an intermittent, uncontrollable diaphragmatic spasm causing a sudden inhalation which is interrupted by a spasmodic closure of the glottis. <laughs> I am? Yes. <laughs> well, what does that mean, Doctor? You hiccup. I know I hiccup. <laughs> I can hear myself. Uh, how do I get rid of them? Uh, now, don't get excited. I have a painless and infallible cure. Oh, uh, you have? What is it? Eat a quart of ice cream fast. That'll be five dollars, please. Oh! So... The judges' chambers are down at the end of the hall, T.P. Oh, jumping jeeps. Look at the clock. This is a of a time to show up. <laughs> Feeling better, Uncle Moe? No. I've eaten so much ice cream, I sound like a good humor man. Now, take it easy, Uncle Moe. Uh, you take it easy, young man. And don't say anything to the judge. Shh. Here we are. Ted, did you send the financial report down this morning? Stop! Shh, keep quiet. <laughs> now, don't worry. That report went down early. It should make a wonderful impression. Well, come on, let's go. Yeah, might as well face old pickle puss. Yeah. Careful, Leroy. Anything you say will be used against me. Come in. Uh, hello, Judge Hooker. At last. I was ready to go home. <laughs> what are you hiccuping for, Gildersleeve? For about four hours now. Uncle Mark's been suffering all day long, Judge. Yeah, maybe if you could frighten him, uh, Quiet, Judge. Leroy, quiet. Uh, yes, Judge. I'd have been here sooner except for <laughs> that. Well, I'm glad you sent down your report, Mr. Gildersleeve. Gave me time to study it. I'm pleased with what I found. Gee, that's swell, Judge. I thought you could do a good job for these children. You uh, you did? Well, thank you, Judge Hooker. In that case, we can leave. Come on, Leroy. Come on, Marjorie. Come on, Ted. What's your rush, Gildersleeve? Take it easy. Oh. Uh, you're nothing but a bundle of nerves. Yes. Well, I never knew nerves came in such large bundles. <laughs> Very good. I wonder if it'd be all right if I was absent from my duties for a while, Judge. I have some business to wind up in Whistle Vista. Uh, sure, sure. Go right ahead. Take all the time you want. Oh? Only be back next week. Oh. <laughs> yes, I see. Well, thanks, Judge. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Oh, poor Uncle Mort. You can't travel in that condition. I bet Mr. Fowler at the drugstore would have something to relieve you. Let's us two go see him, Mort. And if he can't help, I know a couple of other guys that can. All right. If you'll excuse us, we'll run along. Certainly. <laughs> Goodbye, then. Uh, goodbye, goodbye. You drive Uncle Mort home. Oh, sure. Hey, Leroy. Well, Ted, let's get started. Oh, I can't stop that. Hey, those hiccups must be annoying. They are, indeed they are. By the way, I know a sure cure for hiccups. What, you too? Oh, this one never fails. All you need is a brown paper bag. A brown paper bag? 
Well, that takes the prize. Uh, shall I go out and get one, Judge? No, no. Here's a bag. Wait a minute. Wait till I dump the apples out. The uh, apples? <laughs> I teach a class at law school, and the boys always bring me apples. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's try this remedy. Oh, no, don't bother, Judge. I think they're stopping now. Now, let's make sure. All you have to do is to breathe in and out of this bag. Understand? I understand what to do, but I don't understand why. You will. Just put your face in the bag. Fine. You look better already. Now, go ahead and breathe. Oh. The principle is this. Normally, you exhale carbon dioxide and inhale oxygen. Oh, I see. But this way, you inhale the carbon dioxide you've already exhaled. Oh, I see. Is that clear? No. <laughs> well, if you stop inhaling oxygen, you'll stop hiccuping. It's really very simple. So are you. <laughs> you ought to be all right, but now, how are you feeling? <laughs> Worse. Oh, my, and I almost had him licked. Strange, it's never failed before. Let me see. <laughs> There's a hole in the bag. Oh, take me home, Ted. I'm going right to bed. Oh, stop that. Hey, Lefty. Yeah? Here's a pillowcase. The ball is somewhere in here. Okay. Now, when we go out... If anyone asks who we are, we're the laundry man. Oh, I got you, Red. Uh, shall we uh, take this silver cup, too? Let me see. Yeah. Awarded to Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. First place, potato race, annual picnic, Gildersleeve Girdlewicks. <laughs> hey, I guess he was the whole works, huh? What do you say? No, no, no. It's more trouble than it's worth. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, too easily traced, huh? Hey... You sure there's no dough laying around? No, no. I looked every place, even behind the wallpaper. You think we should, uh... Think we should take any more clothes, Lefty? No. I'm wearing three of this guy's suits already. One on top of the other. I'd hate to have to run from some copper this way. Yeah, it's too bad we didn't snag any dough. Well, let's get going. Okay, you take it easy. Say, look. Get away from that window. Hey, there's a big fat guy coming up the walk. Quick, out the back way. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is he alone? Yeah, let's get out of here. No, 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 now wait. I bet he's got a fat bankroll in his pocket. Let's hide behind these curtains. But where? Make it snappy. But where? Shh. Dolly. Yes, Dolly, you and I know the reason. Okay, buddy, stick him up. No, Leroy. What do you mean, Leroy? Get him up. Oh, I see. You must be a friend of Leroy's. Yeah, he puts you up to this, eh? <laughs> What'll that boy think of next? <laughs> I says for you to get them hands up and keep quiet, too. Oh, I'm sorry, mister, but it didn't work. I still got him. <laughs> you see? Hey, Brad. Oh, uh, you brought a friend, eh? Hey, what's the matter with this guy? I thought you knew. I've got the hiccups. <laughs> you see? Look, you, look. This is a gun in my hand. Yep. And I've got a good notion to let you have it. No, thanks. I wouldn't know what to do with it if you did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Brad. Yeah. Should I give it to him? No, I don't want yours either. You're, 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 you're asking for it, mister. I am not. I don't want any guns. I'm afraid of guns. <gasps> Those sometimes they're loaded. <laughs> Shall I plug him, Red? Well, I don't think that'd cure me either, mister. Stand out of the way, Red. I'll show this smart Alex. <laughs> well, very realistic. Blanks, eh? <laughs> you, you missed. He moved. <laughs> I'll try again. Don't do that. You'll have every cop in town here. Oh, a uh, gangbuster. <laughs> what are you going to do with a guy like that? I know, I know. Lefty, you stick your gat in his ribs and I'll frisk him. Okay. Now hold still, will you? This time I can't miss. <laughs> <laughs> now cut it out. Cut hold it out. still. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ticklish. You... Stop it! Here, uh, give me that gun. No, no, no. Oh, you get away from there. Hurry up, Fred. I can't, I can't. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's take his pants off. What? Yeah. That way we get his roll and he can't follow us either. Okay. Oh, no, you don't. By George, that's carrying things too far. Fine friends Leroy has taking my... <laughs> Keep your hands off me, you little... Right Grab him, Red. Oh, oh look out for those flowers. <laughs> I oh. warned you. Now you see what... Uh, oh! That's right, Lefty. Throw him in a fall. Oh, you want to fight, eh? Well, all right. Oh, get off of me before I... Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Stop. Stop. Oh, you give in, huh? Yes. You can quit now. My hiccups are all gone. <laughs> More double torture. <laughs> Grab his legs, Red. Get away from me, Red. Oh, 
Leroy should have never done this. That's right, Lefty. Sit on him. What is this? Wearing my new blue serge suit. This is the last draw. I'm at the stand for you. Help me, Red. Get him off. Hold me. still. Hold still while I hit him. No, no, no. Now, don't move. Now, I... <laughs> now, look what you've done. You've clunked your little partner. I left him. I left him. Speak to me. Yeah, speak to him, Lefty. Hi, right, George. He's out cold. Give me that gun before you do any more damage. Oh, no, you don't. Ouch, my foot. Oh. The minute I saw those tight shoes, I knew you had corns. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mister. Huh? Mister, please. What? Please don't point that gun at me. You're just nuts enough to shoot me. That's a very good idea. A couple of blanks might teach you not to go no, around. No, no, no. Huh? Hey, Uncle Mark, Uncle Mark, what's the big idea leaving the front door open? Well, at last you're here, young man. Those two friends of yours are nothing but a couple of roughnecks. What friends? Who are these guys? Come, come, Leroy. Stop pretending. It's all right. My hiccups have disappeared. Oh, come on. Oh! Look at this room. What? Who's that man? Sleeping on the floor. That's one of Leroy's friends, and he's not sleeping. <laughs> uh, don't try to sneak out, Red. Uh, gee, I... I well, come back here, Red, and I, tell Leroy what you did to me. Well, Uncle, I never saw these men before in my life. And what's all our silverware doing in a pillowcase? Uncle Mort, these guys are burglars. They are? What? They weren't fooling? And to think that I... <gasps> oh, my... <laughs> Now I've got the hiccups all over again. (laughs) The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few minutes. But first, I want to say that being a mere man puts me at quite a disadvantage in talking to you housewives, especially you housewives who are really good cooks, because so many of you are probably already using delicious parquet margarine made by Kraft, and already know from your own experience that it's a grand-tasting, economical margarine that can be used in many ways. Yes, you know, for instance, that parquet margarine is really delicious for table use, and good for your family, too. You know that parquet makes cookies, cakes, and pie crust taste better because it's a genuine flavor shortening that adds its own delicate taste to all baked foods. You know that parquet margarine seasons hot vegetables to a queen's taste, makes pan-fried foods taste better, too, and it doesn't spatter or stick to the pan. And don't overlook the fact that parquet margarine is a highly nutritious energy food and a year-round source of vitamin A. Yes, you housewives who use parquet know how good it is. But some of you listeners probably haven't tried parquet margarine yet. Well, if you haven't, try it. Yes, ask your dealer for a pound or two of parquet margarine tomorrow. Just say parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. It's made by Kraft. Pack, Uncle Mort. Oh, thank you, Marjorie. Say, Uncle, how soon will you get back from Wistful Vista? Uh, not until Wednesday. Oh, you'll be gone that long? Yes. I've got to put my house up for sale, and I also want to be on hand to greet my two little chums, Fibber McGee and Molly, when they return from their vacation Tuesday night. Say, maybe Fibber McGee would buy your house. No, no, no. From my past experience with Fibber McGee, he wouldn't buy the place. He'd just borrow it. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> heard on this program was composed and conducted by William Randolph. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to be with us again next week at the same time for the further adventures of the great Gildersleeve. This is the National Broadcasting Company.